Hi everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Metabolic Link. I'm your host, Dr. Angela Poff. On today's episode, we have an outstanding presentation from Dr. Jeff Volick entitled Exploring the Keto Adapted Phenotype, Focus on Muscle. Identified three areas that I think are underappreciated in terms of how ketones and ketogenic diets impact muscle. One of those is related to uh, glycogen metabolism and some interesting data that we published close to a decade ago, I guess, but really hasn't been followed up on to my knowledge. Uh, another one is related to the idea of uh, ketone production in, in muscle, particularly skeletal muscle. And then I want to share some really provocative newer data uh, that has to do with ketone metabolism and heart function, cardiac function. You know, really, it's, it's, it's almost the world turned upside down when you look at the new evidence around ketones that's emerging on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. Uh, you know, ketones are being described as su super fuels now and longevity metabolites and a superior energy supply. So, uh, you know, it's really a fascinating time right now to be rehabilitating this negative connotation around ketones and embracing all this really exciting science around uh, ketones as a beneficial molecule. So uh, following up on that, uh, I really think it's important to understand ketone concentrations. And what one little fact that's fascinating is that ketones span over four orders of magnitude in the circulation depending on the, the stimuli and the type of diet and conditions uh, you may be experiencing. And so the vast majority of people on a standard American diet are, you know, their ketone levels are probably between 0.1 and 0.2, maybe, you know, occasionally in the morning after an overnight fast up to 0.3. And when you restrict carbohydrates, uh, and, and adopt a ketogenic diet, those levels increase by an order of magnitude. And this is not a linear scale, by the way. This is a log logarithmic scale. Uh, so they'll go up, you know, and we, we kind of define this as nutritional ketosis, somewhere between around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 at the lower end, all the way up to about 4 or 5 millimolar. And, of course, we know we can achieve this, too, with exogenous ketones now, at least transiently. Uh, so this is quite a bit higher than what, you know, most people are experiencing on a, on a typical American diet. And then, um, you know, there is a, a thing called starvation ketosis. And you can bump levels up a little higher than you can with the ketogenic diet. So you might see levels 6 to 7, 8, 9 millimolar. But that's still quite a bit different than what you experience in ketoacidosis, which of course is a very serious, life-threatening, dangerous situation. Uh, so understanding you know, where your ketones are in this range is really important. And I might you know, go as far to propose some different nomenclature around this uh, because you know, this idea of what is normal, what is the, you know, what is the normal ketone level, um, or maybe a better question is what is the optimal ketone level for an individual or for a, th a particular therapeutic target. Uh, these are really important questions, and I think a good argument can be made that this level of ketones in the range of nutritional ketosis is an optimal range for many people. And so terminology we might consider um, is that a normal range of ketones is euketonemia, is this 0.5 to 4 or 5 millimolar. Much like with glucose, we have hypoglycemia, euglycemia, and hyperglycemia. So if you're on a typical American diet, you are hypo, you have hypoketonemia. And then reserve hyperketonemia as, as something that's more along the lines of ketoacidosis. So there are many ways to elevate your ketones. And traditionally, we've, we've thought about ketogenic diets as a, as a standard way to do that. Uh, we now have a variety of exogenous ketone formulas that range from salts to free acid to uh, esters, and those clearly uh, acutely raise ketones transiently. 
but if you use those repeatedly, you can keep your ketones levels quite, a, quite elevated over time. Fasting uh, will raise ketones because they're naturally low in carbohydrate. Uh, exercise transiently, you get a, you get a bump in ketones. Um, you know, experimentally, there are studies where you can infuse beta-hydroxybutyrate salts and induce uh, acute levels of ketones. I'll actually show some data in terms of cardiac function later. And interestingly, if some drugs also uh, induce ketosis, like the SGLT2 inhibitors that result in mild uh, ketosis. And this idea of keto adaptation, you know, I, I really think that should be reserved for the set of adaptations that occur to a ketogenic diet or carb restriction, because I don't think you're going to get the same adaptations from taking exogenous ketones repeatedly and still consuming carbohydrates. There's just a fundamental difference in terms of some of the underlying physiological responses and adaptations that occur. But that takes time. We're just beginning to unravel some of the various adaptations that occur uh, to ketogenic diets and, and various forms of uh, of elevating ketones.